Okay, so now what I want to do is go to the Global Sources website. I hope this works. <laughs> and I want to show you, um, show you around the Global Sources website and also do a search for an actual product and um, sh show you the process of sending an inquiry to a supplier. Okay, so this is the Global Sources website. Now keep in mind, there are two ways of sourcing products. One is to discover new products. Maybe you don't know what you want to source. And so you sometimes come to a website and you just try to discover new products. Hey, what's new? Let me see what's new. And the second way to source is when you know what you want. So you have a specific product in mind and all you need to do is go look for a supplier. So Global Sources can help you do both. So first of all, there are a couple of sections where you can discover products. Analyst choice. This is actually, um, we have a team of analysts in the Philippines and they basically um, review products from manufacturers and then they select products that they think are cool. So you can come over here and you, you, know, you can see all of the analyst choice products by category. And sometimes you might find uh, you know, pretty cool products over here. Like I'm seeing these types of bags quite a lot nowadays, LED display screen, dynamic backpack, walking advertising, that's pretty cool. This is laptop phone holder, MagSafe laptop side mount clip. So yeah, I mean, just scroll through these pages. You might come across something interesting. And then the other, let me go back to the homepage. Another section that helps you to discover products is top 20 products by category. Now, you know Amazon bestsellers, right? So that's where basically Amazon lists all of the products that are selling really well. So these lists are similar to that. This is basically global sources, top products. These are products that buyers are inquiring on the most on global sources. So let's just look at some of uh, the categories here. Now this is top 24 home products. And there are different subcategories here, furniture and home decor. Now there's top 20 most popular and there's top 20 hot new releases, which is kind of similar to you know Amazon's hot new releases. So kitchen and tableware, I'll just go into one of these. I don't know what we'll find here. So this is like wooden soup, ladle, porridge, ladle, solid. And no, it's, I mean, these, these are not really, you know, new hot products, but these are really products that are posted uh, on the website newly. And uh, there are more, more buyers placing inquiries on these products. So, you know, there's something going on. Why are buyers placing so many inquiries on these products? They're, you know, they're, they are kind of cool products for some reason. And this list is actually updated every day. So if you keep coming back to this list every you know, couple of days, you'll be able to find something new. So those are the two ways that you can you know, discover products. And then this is the third uh, section that you should look for. This is ready to order. So this is the direct order section. Now this is still in beta. So the process to place an order is not really straightforward. It's not like you, you know, just start the order and everything is done online. You do need to contact the supplier, negotiate a little bit, and, and then you got to come back over here. I won't go into the exact process, but this is again something that you can just explore whether over here on the desktop or you can also uh, place orders on uh, the app. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is search for a product. And the product that I'm searching for is TWS earbud with charging case. TWS is a true wireless earbuds. That's a very popular product nowadays. And uh, there's a lot of demand for those products. And there are lots of suppliers producing those products too. So when I do a search, these are the search results. And at the top, you'll see that there are three tabs, product list, supplier list, and hot products. Now, most uh, most buyers or most Amazon sellers would just, you know, stick to the product list and they'll go through the products and see what, what they find interesting. And that's good. What you can do is actually just sort the products by date product posted. And then you'll be able to see all of the products that are recently posted. So this gives you an idea of what are the new products on the website. And so again, if you are trying to discover new products, this is a good way of, you know, seeing what's being posted recently. But if you are looking for a specific supplier for, uh, you know, TWS earbud with charging case, then uh, sort by relevancy, don't sort by date posted, and go to supplier list. Now, this is a mistake that sometimes people make when they're sourcing. They really focus on the product, whereas you should be focusing on the supplier, the supplier's capability. If you have a good supplier that specializes in the product that you want, you will have fewer problems down the line. So always focus on the supplier, not really on the product. And also, you know, the product, you'll see that there are 24,000 results. So you, you can't even go through all of the results. And when you're scrolling through the product list, many times you'll see that you, you will see 
products from the same supplier again and again. So you're not even seeing all of the suppliers that are there on the website. So I would recommend always go to supplier list. The other thing you can do over here is uh, check this verified manufacturers. So, um, you know, Global Sources does a really good job of checking certifications of manufacturers. And uh, there's actually a team that checks these certificates. And there's also third party um, checks that are done to make sure that these companies are real manufacturers and that they have um, the licenses to, um, to actually manufacture. So I would always recommend, suggest, you know, if you want to source from a manufacturer, there are pros and cons of going to a trading company as well. But let's assume we want to source from a manufacturer now. So now I'll go and start looking at suppliers. And now this entire row is about uh, this supplier, you know, Dongguan, Yomai, Acoustic. And similarly, there, the, each row is for one supplier. And there's a couple of things that you can see about the supplier right away. So first of all, they're verified manufacturer. That's really good. They've been on global sources for two years. That's good too. And then the star ranking over here, it's actually based on how much they pay global sources and how, uh, which determines how much information they can actually uh, publish on the website. And so this is also an indication of how established a company is, because generally the companies that have higher star ranking are typically you know, bigger companies that have bigger marketing budgets and they're more established. So the other thing that you could also do is um, sort by supplier rank. So you have the more bigger and established companies uh, up top. But also keep in mind that if you are a small kind of Amazon sellers, seller, you don't wanna deal with a really big company because their MOQs will be larger and you will be a very small buyer for them and they will not really prioritize you. So you wanna, you wanna search for a company that's kind of mid-sized, not too small, kind of a mid-sized company with maybe you know, less than 200 or so workers um, and also a company that would want to grow with you. So the other thing that I really look for is their product specialization. Now, I really want a, a company that specializes in the product that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for Bluetooth um, for TWS headsets or uh, earbuds. So I really want a company that specializes in those products. Um, another thing that I'm gonna look for is this over here, right below their title. Um, and this is the USP of the supplier. And this is very carefully written. You know, There is a team at Global Sources that writes all of this, uh, the, the USP of the supplier. So this is quite important. You know, What is the supplier think of themselves? Like, how do they want to position themselves? This is pretty important. So, you know, our criteria for product tests are 20% higher than the industry standard. So, you know, immediately, the, okay, this supplier does want to focus on quality. And then here, Walmart and Disney audited factory with 18 years OEM, ODM experience. So again, their USP or their specialty is that they're Walmart and Disney audited. So it's probably a big factory, but you know, you, you know that they do have good facilities and um, very strong capability. Okay, so the way to check what their product specialization is, is to look at their product catalog. So let's go to full product catalog over here and see what products what other products this supplier makes. So you can see their headphones, headphones, face masks, like all suppliers are doing PPE products nowadays, headphones, cases, earphones. So generally headphones, they're focusing on headphones. That's pretty good. You can also go into company information and um, you know look at their business registration profile. So this profile has been authenticated and verified by a third party. You can see the date over here. Then some more information about their uh, capital, and what is their business scope? This is pretty important as well. And then you can see the assessment. So all of this gives you an idea of how big the company is. You know, you can see how many uh, workers they have as well. And foreign trade staff, 10, revenue 5.6. So this kind of a mid-sized company, uh, I would say. And then export markets. This is really important because if you are, um, you know, sourcing for a specific market, you want to make sure that the supplier has experience in your market. So Eastern Asia, 10%, Europe, 20%, North America, 50%, Oceania. So US is their main focus. You know, that's good to know. Number of production staff, 38. So this is kind of a small company, I would say, not really a mid-sized company. So here's all of the other information that you can see about the company. Okay, so what I would generally do is then just scroll through all of these uh, supplier results and uh, see which supplier I think is good for my specific needs. 
Um, so I'm going to scroll down and I had actually looked at this supplier previously when I did a search and I had looked at their company profile and everything. And I also liked their products a lot. So I'm going to go ahead into this supplier and you'll see that their entire catalog is just focused on uh, earphones and headphones. So they're really specialized. They may be producing other products as well. You know, they, de they definitely, definitely may be doing that, but they're definitely focused a lot on Bluetooth speakers. And we can be confident that this is a manufacturer because you see this icon over here, the red icon, this is a manu verified manufacturer. So it says here, the business scope of this supplier's independently verified business registration as licensed by relevant government agencies allows it to manufacture goods. So, you know, this is really important and this has been checked by a third party. And then I also like suppliers that are O2O and O2O basically means online to offline. That means that they have exhibited at a trade show as well and generally, suppliers that have exhibited at a trade show are more established because they're investing a lot of money into you know, att attending a trade show, getting all, their, all of their staff there, and they're putting themselves out in front of buyers. So definitely more reliable. Okay, and um, there was this one product that I really liked over here. So let's say this one. And now I wanna place um, an inquiry. So I go to the product page, and then here you can see more information about the product and all. So let's click on inquire now. Let's say you want to inquire about this product. Now this is the inquiry form. So you can see that you're sending an inquiry to this one supplier for this specific product. There's also an option to send inquiry to all 200 verified suppliers. I would not recommend that because then you, know, you don't really know who you're sending um, inquiries to um, unless you don't have that many options or unless suppliers are not responding back to you, then you can go with that option. But otherwise just uh, choose companies that you wanna to send to. Also the message that you send here is very, very important because just as we are vetting suppliers, suppliers are also vetting buyers. So I have actually saved a template over here that I want to go through and I wanna tell you what kind of uh, message to write to a supplier so that they can, they will respond to you faster. Okay, so what not to do, first of all, don't write a very generic, vague message that, hey, send me your catalog and prices. Suppliers hate those kinds of messages and they know that you're not a serious buyer. Because see, there are a limited number of hours in the day, right? So suppliers also have to prioritize and they have to work on serious buyers. So you have to portray in your message that you are a serious buyer. So I generally like to start with, you know, just uh, stating your name and your company and your country as well. And it's really important to, portray a professional appearance, right? You don't want to kind of give the impression that you're somebody sitting in a basement somewhere um, and, a, you know, kind of a one-man band, which you may be, and that's okay. But um, I'm not saying that you should lie or, you know, give false information, but, but kind of portray yourself as a professional company. So give your company name, your um, country, and then give a little bit of background about yourself. Like what kinds of products do you specialize in? And then you can say something like, um, you know, we want to add TWS earbuds to our catalog. We expect to order 5,000 units annually after a test order of 500 units to test market demand. So there are a couple of things that we've done over here. First of all, we have said that we are adding this product to our catalog. So we don't, we don't do it currently. We've also give them some indication of how much we will order in the future. And this doesn't have to be super accurate, but you know, this is something that you can sort of estimate if the product is successful. And at the same time, we're also telling them that we're gonna be doing a test order before we place a large order. Now, this section is really important. You want to, uh, you, you have to do some research about the product beforehand and you should know what is it that you exactly want. What are the features that are important to you? When you do that, then the supplier knows that yes, this buyer knows what he's talking about. He's serious about, um, you know, this sourcing this product and um, they will respond to you faster. And then don't make the email too complicated. Like sometimes buyers put so much information into that email that it's just very overwhelming uh, for the supplier and they don't respond to you. The objective of sending this RFI is to just get enough information from the supplier to get the conversation started to sort of sort of shortlist uh, suppliers. So you would send maybe this sort of inquiry to you know five, 10 suppliers and shortlist to uh, two or three suppliers and then have Zoom calls with them or WeChat calls with them to get further information about the company and the products. So then you can just ask some basic information that is super important. So first is, uh, images specification and FOB price of so-and-so model. So this is the model number that I really like. So I want to specify that. The lead time for test order and samples. 
because we do want to get a sample before we place, uh, before we even place the test order. Sample cost to Singapore by courier, uh, packaging options available, and then have you exported to Singapore previously? So I think this is quite important because if the supplier has experience in your market, then it just makes things easier for you. And then you can also um, ask them to add you on WeChat. WeChat is good for just faster communication, but I would always always encourage you to have, uh, you know, all the formal communications within Global Sources Message Center because then there's a record of all of the conversation that you have with them, right? Um, that's super important. And then over here, the more information you give to them, the the more likely they are to, you know, reply to you. So let's say it's uh, 500 pieces of the expected order quantity, and then your name. Try not to give a Gmail or a Yahoo email address. That is also a red flag to suppliers because they know that, um, you know, maybe this is not like a professional company. Um, this is a test account that I have, so you can ignore the Yahoo email there. <laughs> and then your company name, region. The contact number is also pretty important um, because if you do have, if you do give a real phone number, then, you know, they might even contact you. Company website URL. Again, this is also important try not to give your Amazon storefront URL because, I mean, you don't want to advertise your products or, you know, your brand to everybody right up front. So if you do have your own company website, and I would encourage all of you, you know, once you start selling, once you have your own brand, you should just put up a simple website as well. And then, yeah, whatever other information you want to give, that's of, of course optional. So it's pretty simple and you can save the template, you know, as a quick message to just save some time. So that's one way of sending inquiries. And um, another way to send an inquiry is to actually send an RFQ. So let's say you don't have time to uh, you know, email suppliers one by one. So you can click on this uh, button over here, get quotations. And once you click on that, I've already got it opened here. So, oops. Okay, so once you click on get quotations, you come to this form, request for quotations, RFQ. And then here you need to select, um, put in the product name. So what exactly is it that you're sourcing? So I'm sourcing for TWS earbuds with charging case for Singapore market. So again, be as specific as possible. And then you have to choose the product category. This is very important that you choose the correct product category because emails are sent based on uh, the product category that a supplier is tied to. And then again, a similar message, you can actually send, this is exactly the same message that I would send to a supplier in an RFI that I would uh, send in an RFQ as well. And then again, the more information that you give over here, estimated order quantity, if you have photos, you can upload photos as well. And then you can actually get a score over here. So if you are, uh, the more fields you fill in, you'll see that your score is, is high over here. So that's um, RFQ. Um, okay, so that's the demo. 